peace as we come before the throne room of God. We thank you for our evening altar. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you are enabling us to come together from different territories, from different lands, to gather, to pray, to worship, and to lift up your holy name. From wherever we are connecting to this prayer line, we pray that there will be a godly deliverance in the life of every home. Amen. Every family connected to this prayer line will receive their miracle in Jesus' name. Miracle in their body, miracle in their mind, and miracle in their spirit. Some of them are crying for their children, and we pray, Father Lord, that you will make a way for their children. Some families are stuck and stagnant, not able to see the next level. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me that a family connected to this prayer line, you're stuck, not able to see the next level of your life, but God is able, and God will release a faith for you to progress to the next level. Whatever is stopping your people from progressing in this prayer line, every family, every family under the influence of evil power, under the influence of witchcraft and black magic, stuck and struggling, every yoke, we break it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we pray that God is telling me that God will turn your mourning into dancing. Some of you are crying for many, many months. Uh, for many, many months, you're crying, crying not seeing an answer but God says child of God amen wait stay on amen I will turn your morning into dancing father lord we pray for a miracle tonight we pray that you will speak to us through your word your word will come forth with power hide us under your precious blood let Jesus alone be exalted in our midst we are not here to exalt our talent we are not here to extol exalt our ability we are not here to exalt our knowledge but we are here to exalt the name of Jesus, which is the name above all names. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Every knee, every knee that is standing in the path of our breakthrough. Every witchcraft standing in the path of our breakthrough. Every black magic standing in the path of our breakthrough. We pray will become paralyzed through the precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We believe that God is moving in our midst. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Can we turn our Bible to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. And the verse that God is giving to us today is from verse 28. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said to the woman, said to her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Great is your faith and let it happen. Let it be as you desire. Let it, let it be done for you as you desire. This is one thing that we all like to hear from Jesus, isn't it? Let it be done to you as you desire. We are all people who have different desires in our life. It's these desires that is enabling us to live on this earth. If we have no desires, our life is like a dead body. No one auntie told me, Premi, I have no desires at all in my life. She, was, she, was, she had crossed 70 and she told me I have no desires in my life. I said, that's a lie. If you are alive on this earth, you will have a desire. She said, no, Premi, I have no desires. Uh, then, okay, I said, okay, okay, that's nice. So I think uh, we will pray right now because there's no point of talking to people who don't have desires. So I said, come, we'll pray. So as I was about to pray, she told me, uh, but pray me, just I one thing I want to pray. I said, what is that now? Like, I will not, you know, be bedridden and uh, God will take me without being a burden to my children. I said, that's a desire. <laughs> so many times we really don't know whether... You know, what we desire, how to desire, how to take our life forward. Every one of us have desires. One way or another, all what we have in our mind is our desires. And God is looking to this woman and telling her, your faith is great. This is a Canaanite woman. 
She is not a disciple of Jesus Christ. She is not a woman who's been constantly following Jesus. She is coming from a heathen land called the Canaanite woman. And let me tell you, Jesus is looking at this, this particular woman and telling her, your faith is great. So this makes us understand there are different degrees in faith. There is little faith. There is I mean, small faith. There is great faith. And therefore, we need to always check and see whether we are controlled by great faith in our life. Because faith is the currency that we have in our life to make heaven work for us. Faith is the currency of heaven with which we make things happen on the earth. If we need anything to happen on this earth, we need to have faith. Because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please God. We are coming together for prayer. We are living a spiritual life for what? To please God. The main intention of every one of us is, I need to please God. Because without pleasing God, I can never get what I really want in my life. Therefore, faith is the heavenly currency that we use in an exchange to get things done on this earth. We need to be people of faith. Jesus had to constantly rebuke the disciples. The disciples were constantly walking with Jesus. They saw miracles. They saw deliverances. In spite of that, the Lord Jesus had to constantly rebuke them for their unbelief. Unbelief has a lot of consequences. Unbelief has a lot of consequences. I'm just going to give you some references for unbelief, the consequence of unbelief, so that we work on our faith and move forward. So let me tell you, unbelief has a lot of consequences. So we need to constantly maintain a faith so that the enemy will not attack us with unbelief. If the enemy can put seeds of unbelief in our heart, he has already won the battle. And people who unbelieve will not get anything from God. Therefore, these days can we work on our faith. Now, what is faith? What is faith? Through this particular incident, I'm going to highlight four important, four to five important steps that we need to involve in our faith to see God appreciating our faith to tell us, great is thy faith. Faith is not positive confession. Faith is not positive confession. Some people from morning till night, they say, it will happen, it will happen, it will happen. By saying that, it won't happen. Faith is not positive confession. Yes, indeed, people with faith will talk the positive. People with faith will talk the positive. But again, faith is not simply, amen, repetition of certain things. Once again, faith is not the repetition of something. Faith is definitely the right vocabulary at the right time, but faith has something deeper. Number one, coming to this particular incident, it begins with verse 21. Verse 21 onwards, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Verse 22, and behold, a woman of Canaan, Canaan came from the region, cried out to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. So number one, what is faith? Faith is the choice to take a problem to the right person. Faith is the choice to take a problem to the right person. Where are we taking a problem? Some people will take the problem to everyone else and then finally come to God. They will call all the numbers from morning till evening. They'll call all the numbers for help. And finally, nobody turned out. So night they'll say, come, we'll pray. So let me tell you, this faith is step number one, making the ch choice to take it to the Lord. Faith is connecting to God. This woman, a Canaanite woman, a heathen woman, she said, I'm going to take my problem. I have a problem with my child. 
I have a problem related to my daughter. My daughter has been giving me a lot of struggle. Today, we are in a generation where more prayer is needed for our children. Our children is living in a generation which is controlled by deaf, dumb, and foul spirit. We need to, amen, we need to be parents standing in the gap and constantly interceding that our children will never be controlled by a deaf, dumb, and foul spirit. Deaf, dumb, and foul spirit. I want you to name it and pray every day. What is deaf spirit? They will pretend as if they're hearing, but they're not hearing. Today's generation is like that. You talk to them. You must be like that. You must be like this. You must read the Bible. Mm, head will be shaky, but doing won't happen because they can't hear. They're controlled by a deaf spirit. Number two, they are controlled by a dumb spirit. What is a dumb spirit? The spirit of this world that doesn't praise and glorify God. We are living in a generation where there are self praises selfies, a lot of selfies, highlighting our own self, isn't it? Dumb. So glorifying God is not that easy for them. And a foul spirit, even without our knowledge, even without our knowledge, our children are exposed to all the immoral lifestyles of this generation. They just have to look into an advertisement. Something or the other is perverted in this generation. So parents connected to this prayer line, this evening God is giving us a prophetic word to pray more for our children. We can give them the best education. We can give them the best clothes. We can give them the best bank balance. But if we don't stand in the gap and intercede like this Canaanite woman, we will definitely lose our battle with our children because the devil can trap our children and block our progress. Amen. Therefore, we need to pray more for our children. We need to pray for our, our children because especially with Corona, our children are always with phones, always with laptops, and we do not know what is happening in the background. I'm getting an, I mean, a lot of prayer requests where children are losing track because of the internet connections. So we can't just blindly believe things, but we need to pray. So number one, faith begins when we learn to come to Jesus. Faith begins when we say, Jesus is my answer. Faith begins when I say, Jesus is my solution. Faith begins when you and I say, I'm going to take it to Jesus. Taking to people will not give me an answer. I'm going to take it to Jesus. Faith begins with that connection. Jesus is not the last resort. He is the first resort. Jesus is not the last place. He's the first place. Amen. We go to all the people. Finally, they don't get anything. Now come, we'll fast and pray. Why couldn't you fast and pray in the beginning? Before you started knocking at doors. Before you started asking people for help. So we need to, number one, faith is making the right choice to take the issue to Jesus. Number two, number two. Amen. The Bible says in verse 22, amen, Matthew 15, 22. She took the problem to Jesus. She connected to Jesus. And now she says, Jesus, have mercy on me. O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon possessed. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. So let me tell you, faith is prayer. People with faith will pray. People without prayer, faith will not pray. Why you're not praying? No faith. Very easy to diagnose. Some people say, I can't pray. And let me tell you why they can't pray. Deep within themselves, they are battling unbelief. We, deep within themselves, they are battling doubt. People with unbelief and doubt cannot pray. But here in this particular verse, she is praying. Prayer is the language of the believer. Prayer is the language of the person that, that has faith. When we have faith, we pray. When we have faith, we communicate to God. Prayer is the language of the believer. 
So now she says, what is, how, does, how does a prayer go? She says, Lord, son of David, have mercy. Prayer is connecting to the mercy of God. Prayer is not demanding. Go that side. Come this side. <laughs> that is not prayer. Jesus is a role model for prayer. How did Jesus pray? Turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Jesus is our role model. And how did Jesus pray? Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. The Bible clearly explains to us the prayer life of Jesus. How did Jesus pray? Who in the, earthly, yeah, you can read. Yeah. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Epi, yeah, so the Bible, how did Jesus cry? Did Jesus command? I command that death to go. I command that thing to go. No, the Bible says with vehement cries and tears, he pleaded, he pleaded. Jesus said, amen, the Bhaktimai said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We need to go to a deeper level of prayer. We need to come to a place where we say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And that is what, amen, Jacob did in, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness of Peniel. Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. What did he pray? Genesis 32, 26. I will not leave you until you bless me. He went on holding on. You know, when Bethel, when Jacob was praying, in Bethel, when Jacob was praying, Jacob said, what did Jacob say? If you do this, if you do this, if you do that, that was prayer for him. Demanding God, bargaining with God. Yeah, for some extent that prayer worked. But as he progressed with God, he had to come to a place where demand and bargaining did not work. He simply had to cry for the mercy of God. You know, in the beginning stages of our life, might be we say, Lord, you give me this, I'll give that to you. You give me that, I'll do that for you. For some time, all that prayer will work. But forever, that prayer will not work. Some people tell me, sister, in the beginning, I used to pray, immediately God answered. I'll tell the Lord, I'll do that for you. Next day, sir, the answer will come. Yeah, that was the beginning stage. But as we progress in the faith, we need to come to a place of penial where we say, Lord, now my prayer has to go beyond human words of crying and pleading in the presence of God, saying to him, I will not leave you, Lord, until, until you make a change in my life. This evening, God is calling a group of people who can stand in the gap in faith and pray some prayers of faith for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So number two, faith is beyond human words. It is crying and pleading and praying in the presence of God. Prayer is the language of the believer. Prayer is not the language, amen, of an unbeliever. People who have faith will pray. Amen. People who have faith will pray. We will pray till God answers. We will pray till God answers because the Lord has given us a lot of example of praying without failing. He says we need to just pray, pray, pray till God comes down for us. Look at this woman. She says, Jesus, she said, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Look at that pleading. Prayer needs to go from demands to pleading. Many of our prayers are like what demands. Lord, you have to do that for me. Lord, you better do that for me. By November, you have to do that for me. It's like a provision list. I need this. I need that. I need this. And I need this. Oh, it's not in the shop, so we'll try some other day. But prayer is pleading, pleading for the mercy and kindness of God. That is faith. So in faith, we make the right choice to connect to God. In faith, we make the right prayer, pleading for the mercy of God. And number three, in faith. 
What do we see? Verse 23. Now, verse 23, what happened? But he answered her, not a word. What will we do? After all the pleading and crying, Jesus is quiet. My goodness, we will never come for any more online prayers. <laughs> I connected to this online thinking I'll get a miracle. Now, what's the point? From March, I'm connecting and praying. Nothing is happening. Jesus is just silent. You know, the Lord answers in four ways. There are four answers that God give us. Number one is yes, and we are excited. Number two is no, we are disappointed. Number three is wait, we have some hope. Oh, God said wait. So some hope is there. Number four is silence. There is the very difficult area in our life. Sometimes God is silent, not even giving us a prophetic word, not even giving us, don't get desperate those times. When God is silent, we need to move to the next level of our faith. When God is silent, we need to move to the next level of our faith. And what is that faith? We see that in verse 25. Verse 23, it said, he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she cries after us. Even when Jesus is silent, she never stopped following Jesus. Today, God is looking for a group of people who have the faith to follow even when God is silent. Amen. God is silent, not even giving us a clue about our tomorrow, not even giving us a clue about the next job, not even giving us a clue whether we'll get married, not even giving us a clue how we'll come out of our financial crisis. In that particular scenario, what is our faith? When that kind of attack came to Naomi and Elimelech, what did they do? God was silent. Famine in the land, God is silent. What did they do? They in their brains thought, come, we'll go to Moab, be there for 10 years from for some years and come back when God visits Bethlehem. So they leaned on their own understanding, moved to Bethlehem, moved to Moab. The consequence is they lost many things in the bargain. Child of God, this evening the Lord is warning somebody. God is silent in your life. He is not showing up. He is not giving you a clue. He is not telling you anything what's going to happen. But please don't lean on your understanding. Make a choice in your flesh and move out of the will of God. Because outside the will of God, you will not be protected, says the Lord God Almighty this evening. Amen. Hallelujah. So anybody contemplating, leaning on your own understanding, the spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you, Please, please wait. God is silent. We understand your desperate situation. But like the Canaanite woman, just follow. Just follow. The Bible says, my sheep hears my voice and follows me. And when we follow the Lord, regardless of not knowing where he's taking us, child of God, God will definitely take you to the green pastures, to the still waters, anointing your head with oil and making your cup of overflow. Abraham followed without knowing where God is taking. Somebody in this prayer line, somebody in this prayer line, Brother Vikas, follow, follow, even if you don't know where God is taking you. Like Abraham, like Abraham, just say, Lord, I will make altars and just follow. The rest is left to God. If we can do that, let me tell you, our journey in the end will be more complete rather than, I mean, all the incompleteness that would be adding into our life. Look at this Canaanite woman. Jesus didn't even say a word. What would we do? What will we do when Jesus is not giving us a word? Amen. When Jesus is not giving us a word, we say, oh, we'll do something else. We'll find some shortcuts. We like all the shortcuts. <laughs> Somebody said, you just have to go and put some offering there. Something will happen. Come, tomorrow we'll go and put some offering there. <laughs> Somebody said, we just have to go there and then we'll get a miracle. Nothing happens. The silence of God is for a purpose to see whether we can follow even 
when we don't get a deliverance. So in faith, there is following. In faith, there is following. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Jesus said to the ordinary disciples, follow me and I'm going to change your profession. The spirit of the Lord is telling me some of your professions will change. Some of your professions will shift up if you are willing to follow in the silence. Yes, the spirit of the Lord is clearly telling that some of the professions are going to change. The silence of the Lord is molding you for a change that God is preparing you for. Amen. So number three, in faith, there is following. And number four, number four in faith. So now she's following, but Jesus is not even minding her. Jesus is not even minding her. If we were in that situation, what would we do? If our pastor doesn't mind us, will we, will the next thing that will come, we'll change our church. That man is not even minding us. <laughs> we like people minding us. Now, Jesus is not even minding us. The disciples are feeling so bad. So the disciples are telling the Jesus, please, please send her away. She's following us. Now, what is Jesus saying? 24. But he answered and said, I was not sent to accept. I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, now Jesus replied, 25. Then how mean, isn't it? We never expect that kind of answer. But 25, then Jesus came, then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. Number four, the fourth step of faith is from following, she became a worshipper. From following, she turns out to be a worshipper. No answer. No answer. Jesus is not even minding her, not even giving her a regard, but a true follower will become a true worshipper. A true follower. If we are following God only for some material blessing, if we are following God only for some earthly deliverance, if we are following God only to get some earthly things done, let me tell you, we will get disappointed. But if we are following God for eternity, if we are following God to make heaven our home, let me tell you, from a follower, we will turn out to be a worshiper. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says she came and worshipped him. She came and worshipped him. That, that is why Jesus told her great faith. Great faith, not because she was merely repeating something. No, not because, amen, she was just vainly saying, oh, Jesus can heal me, Jesus can heal me. No. Uh, number one, she made the right choice to connect to the Lord. Number two, her prayer from vocabulary turned to mere crying and pleading. Number three, in spite of the silence, she followed. And number four, even when Jesus ignored her, she had the audacity to come and worship him. Amen. God is looking for a generation that will say, even if God is silent from a follower, I will turn to be a worshiper. Amen. Only such people can change the world upside down. God has handpicked up all of us to be a, in a part of this prayer line so that we will change our destiny by our faith. Great things will happen for us. Amen. So can we say, I'm going to be a follower to a worshiper. From a follower, she became a worshiper. What is worship? God has created us to worship. Psalms 100 gives us a call for worship. What does uh, Psalms 100 say? Come before, yeah, Psalms 100 was 1 and 2. Psalms 100 was 1 and 2. The Bible Make says, a noise to the Lord, all you lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Yeah, next verse. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not ourselves. We are his people and sheep of his pastures. Yeah, so Psalms 100 is a call for worship. God has created every one of us to worship God. What is worship? It is giving to God what belongs to God. Giving to God what belongs to God. 
worship is not just coming together singing few songs and going back no worship is beyond that the bible begins with worship cain and abel worshiped they were worshipers but the bible says god was pleased only with abel's worship and was not pleased with cain's worship why because abel gave the best to god so in worship attitude is very important god doesn't need us something or oh, today no mood so i'm not singing let brother vigas only sing i'll just look at the phone and look at my phone like this no worship is a right attitude amen abel said i want to give my best to god i don't know whether i will have my tomorrow but i when i'm worshiping today my attitude to god is very important and therefore i need to give the best to god but what did cain do oh something is enough every day there's worship so i give god something and god was not pleased with this attitude and therefore was not pleased with what he gave there is danger in not worshiping god turn your bible to romans chapter 1 verse 21 Romans there is danger of not worshiping God when you turn your bible to Romans chapter 1 verse 21 Romans chapter 1 verse 21 For although they knew God they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him but yeah. their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened See they, they though they knew God they did not glorify him as God worship is glorifying God as God and therefore the bible says though they knew God they failed to glorify him as God and give him the gratitude i mean give him the praise give him the adoration and let me tell you worship only can break bondages worship can pass the power to loose our chains and that is why the enemy doesn't like us worshiping when we worship prison doors will open whatever prison we are in for years and years together the moment you and i begin to worship prison doors will open chains will loose but we need to worship with the right mentality glorifying god for who he is and giving him the gratitude for what he's doing but when we don't do that you know what happens our heart becomes i mean our heart becomes darkened when we don't worship some people say no mood sister i am very tired you are losing your blessing <laughs> when we are not worshiping we are losing our blessing our heart becomes darkened and when our heart becomes dark and you know what happens verse 25 romans 125 romans 125 they exchange they exchange the truth of god for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised Amen. yeah so when we don't worship when we don't give glory to god our hearts are darkened and there is a i mean there is an exchange that happens we exchange the truth for lies we believe all the lies what is a lie oh it's not going to happen we are not going to come out of this problem we will die with this problem no good job will come no debt cancellation will come we will start believing all the lies when our heart is darkened lies look like truth rather than truth amen so we begin to believe lies and when we begin to believe lies what we do we begin to worship the creation rather than the creator danger zone danger zone faith is worship faith is worship some people say tell me sister i don't know why problems are not going so we'll ask them how much time do you worship oh i don't even have mood to worship <laughs> always depressed sister <laughs> so i would tell them because you are not glorifying god for who he is your heart is darkened now you're believing all the lies the devil is a liar he's the father of lies he's constantly speaking lies to us 
you are not going to get children you are not going to get married your parents are not going to be delivered don't believe lies with god nothing is impossible today the lord is speaking to somebody who is right now under the influence of lies begin to worship that your hearts will be enlightened to believe the truth and not believe the lies change your worship stop worshiping the creation stop looking to man stop looking to job priority shift when our heart is darkened priority shift priority shift oh no time for online prayer i have lot of other jobs you can sit hours together and browse through youtube no problem you can sit hours together and look through all the channels no problem the moment somebody comes in for online prayer important call is coming what important god nothing <laughs> this is the lie of the enemy to stop you from not getting deliverance i will send my word and deliver my people even now when i'm talking some of the dark hearts are they may exchange and right now light is coming into your heart for the glory of god amen so please worship look at this woman a canaanite woman a woman of great faith and what happened she in spite of god ignoring her she said i am just going to worship because worship is giving our best to god knowing god glorifying god for who he is you know when we worship you know what happens turn your bible to daniel chapter 4 daniel chapter 4 Daniel chapter 4 we read the story of Nebuchadnezzar who worshiped his own self he walked on top of his palace and he said oh all these things i made this is my hard work i did all this i, I am the center of attraction some people are like that even in even in our even in our spiritual field we have some people center of attraction is there my prayer my fasting my what is it <laughs> <laughs> that is not biblical so now here is nebuchadnezzar they are controlled by nebuchadnezzar spirit even in our christian field we have people who have nebuchadnezzar spirit my fasting my prayer my thing ha huh? all my 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 that is nebuchadnezzar spirit danger zone again so let me tell you now here nebuchadnezzar entered into a my spirit you can read that later on and the bible says uh nebuchadnezzar had to go go through a consequence because of worshiping itself and not god was 31 when these words were in the mouth was 30 was his self praise self praise amen we can't worship our own self we can't worship our own self jo amen john said i must decrease and he must increase now nebuchadnezzar began to worship his own self and worship everything that he made So now, when these words were in him, God touched him because God wanted worship. Seven years he went into the wilderness, and after the seven seven years being in the wilderness, you know what happened? Was thirty four. Was thirty four. Daniel chapter four was thirty four. And at the end of the time, I Nebuchadnezzar raised my eyes towards heaven. and my sanity was restored when yeah. i praised the most high i honored and glorified him who lives forever amen it, it took 7 years for nebuchadnezzar to understand that god alone has to be worshiped amen we should not go through those 7 years don't go through the wilderness don't go through the wilderness to learn to worship The Bible says, after seven years, this man came back, and after seven years, at the end of that seven years of wilderness, I Nebuchadnezzar, what did I do? I lifted up my eyes to where? God. And when I lifted up my eyes to God, what I what came back to me? My understanding came back to me. You want understanding? Look to God. Don't look to Google. <laughs> today we are google searches any understanding come in google let me tell you if we need understanding in our life we need to look up understanding comes from above my understanding came return to me and and when my understanding returned to me i blessed the most high 
praised and honor him who lives forever. When understanding came to me, I understood worship belongs to God. And I began to worship God. And when I began to worship God, what happened? Look at the blessing. Amen. Look at the blessing. Verse 36. At that and same it, time, my reason returned to me and the glory of my kingdom, my honor, my splendor returned to me. My counselors, my nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Underline, underline. Take this as a Rima word. If you want blessing to come into your life, worship Nebuchadnezzar, the greatest king of that time said, when I began to worship, my reason returned to me. My glory and my kingdom returned to me. My honor and my splendor returned to me. My counselors and my nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom. God is releasing restoration to some of you who have lost something in your life. Worship, God will restore everything that you lost if you and I are willing to worship even when God is ignoring you. Worship is crucial. My time is running short. I'm closing. Number four is worship. And number five, I don't know how many of you started praying. Why is the sister not stopping? Non-stop, she's going. <laughs> so just a few more minutes and I'm closing. The crucial part of it. So number one, faith is making the right choice to go to Jesus with our problem. Faith is prayer beyond words, pleading for the mercy and the greatness of God, for the kindness of God. Number three, faith is following even when Jesus is ignoring. Number four, when Jesus is silent. Number four, faith is following. Amen, faith is worshiping even when Jesus is ignoring. And finally, finally, faith, is humility. Faith is humility. What is that? He said, okay, now we read verse 26. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. So Jesus is literally calling this Canaanite woman a dog. If our pastor or anybody called us dog, will we ever get back to them? Such a humiliation. Jesus called her a dog. And now verse 27 is our response. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Faith should definitely produce humility. Faith should definitely produce humility. If there is no humility, there is no faith. So now what is she literally saying? She's literally saying, it's okay. You know, the Jewish people, they always pray, don't create me like a dog and don't create me as a woman. Both of these situations are degrading for them. So in that particular culture, God is calling her a dog. But let me tell you, what is she saying? She says, yes, Lord, I'm willing to be a dog. Yet because, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I am willing to wait for my turn. Humble people are willing to wait for their turn. In those days, dogs are fed after all the people eat. But in modern generation, in our generation, dogs are fed first, first and then only men are fed. <laughs> because dogs are very costly. 40,000 dogs, 40,000 rupees dog, 35,000 rupees dog. One lakh rupee dog. <laughs> All those dogs we have in our house. So we feed them first, then only for the husband, then only for the children, then only for anybody. <laughs> so I don't know whether we can understand this. But in those days, it was not like that. Dogs had to wait for their turn. Only after everyone eating, the balance, the leftover. Today's dogs don't eat leftovers. They need all the modern food. But in those days, leftover. So now, look at the humility of this woman. Faith should progress us to humility. Without humility, there is no faith. Faith can never function in pride. Proud people can't wait. 
proud people can't wait they get so restless oh how many times i'm waiting how many years i'm waiting how many months i'm waiting we become so offended and angry why because there is pride in our heart but this woman says i have faith to wait god is speaking to somebody do you have the faith to wait faith to wait for your turn my turn is coming my turn is coming but will my turn coming i am willing to wait that is faith faith is not getting instant answers but faith is waiting that is why abraham is called a man of faith why he was willing to wait 25 years now god is looking at this woman and saying woman your faith is great because i see a lot of humility in you i see a lot of humility in you this evening as i'm closing let god release that humility that is the greatest part of our faith lord i'm willing to wait for your timing i'm willing to wait for your turn for my time i am willing to wait but in this waiting season i'm willing to worship i'm willing to follow i'm willing to pray i'm willing to choose to connect to you when we have all these five qualities in our life definitely god will look to each one of us and say your faith is great let your desire be done to you may the lord add his greatest riches to this word thank you once again for giving me this opportunity and cooperating with me god bless you god bless you thank you thank you so much sister for accepting our invitation and it was really a blessing for all of us uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, uh, joining today thank you now we'll uh, go abhi hum log prarthna mein jayenge aur kisi ka kuch prarthna request hai to wo log bol sakte hain abhi hum log uh, मैं अनुरोध करूंगी सिस्टर मधुमिता दास से कि वो हमें प्रार्थना में मदद करेगी हम लोग सिस्टर सरोजनी के लिए हम लोग प्रार्थना करेंगे और हम लोग आहाना के लिए प्रार्थना करेंगे उसे जॉन 